Hey everybody, Mike McConville here for Strength Tech Workstations, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Uh, this is basically designed after a 57 Biscayne. It's a Shoster 57. Anyway, this is going to be the next one on the roster for the compensated nut lesson. I've just been kind of leveling the frets and it looks like there's a little bit of trouble in paradise. Or at least a little bit of trouble in purgatory. Like, here's what we got left on the truss rod. Like, if I loosen that off, whoops, that's it. Nothing. But we need to put enough torque on that, even that much, just so that it doesn't rattle loose. There's lots of real estate in the crown of the fret to allow us to sort of correct the inconsistencies in the lay of the neck. But when I come up to here, hear that? So we essentially have no load on the truss rod, and yet we've got that little bit of a backbone. Now when Jody dropped this off, the action was hiked right up. And how many times have you heard me say that? That's not the solution. You should be able to put the action anywhere you want, and it should play effortlessly. So we're going to take care of this. I, I removed that nut because we're putting a compensated nut in, of course. I removed the Kaler locking mechanism because I need to go clean through to level that high spot at the second fret. And as I've said in all those other videos, you need to make sure that you're going along the trajectory of the string path when you fire. Okay, so let's check that again. Done deal. No more ticking. So now we're ready to recrown and polish. So we've got our crowning files, we're taking away all that sort of squareness off the top of the fret. So where we leveled the crown of the fret, of course now what was once round is has a flat top. So the idea of the crowning filing, there's so much misunderstanding when it comes to crowning frets. What we're doing with the crowning file is you can see me sort of leaning from side to side. So the idea is to chase the focal point on the crown back to center. So it's just a few strokes. You never see me go straight up and down. I'm always leaning because this isn't the final move. This is just the beginning. Then we'll switch over to the block that you've seen me use in so many other videos and we'll basically scrub those crowns right back to dead center and then buff them to a mirror shine. Okay, here's another tech deck tip for all you guys with your tech decks. I'm basically strapping this thing down at the third fret and leaving it open from the fourth fret up. I'll probably buff up to the fifth and then I'm going to sw switch over after those frets are buffed and then I'll hold it up here with that second strap. The reason I'm doing that is this is obviously an unusually shaped guitar. Just want to make sure that it doesn't shift while I'm working. So that's the idea behind that. So one strap on, buff, and then you'll see I'll switch over. Okay, showtime. Okay, we'll switch these straps out then and buff those last four frets. Hey guys, here's your compensated nut lesson, lesson number two, with a floating tremolo. So obviously this is much thinner than your typical Les Paul or acoustic guitar nut, Martin guitar nut. So I'm just sort of scribing that just to get a, get a rough idea of uh, what kind of thickness we're looking at. And I will take that down on the disc sander. So we're going to start there. Okay, we obviously have way more than we need here, and that's okay. So I'm just kind of getting an idea on what we're going to need for our final depth. It's our next step.
at this point I like to kind of work it down by hand a little bit with the file to get that final fit. You want to get a nice press fit if you can. It doesn't take much. We're pretty well there. Maybe get the underside a little bit. Okay, let's see what kind of fit we got. So you can see we need to radius the center of that nut a little bit to match the fingerboard radius. I've got a quarter inch chisel here and I'm kind of raking with that chisel, just sort of dragging it across and then I'll blend that in with the file to just sort of concentrate it on the center. We'll have a look at this, see how close we get just doing that. So when I determined the values, like I fretted, as you saw in the other video, when I fretted the 12th fret note and played the open string, this was the amount of displacement we had on those open strings. Okay, just taking care of the last little bit of intonation detail on this compensated nut. Now I'm going to go over to the sander and just kind of smooth that out and it will end up with our final elliptical form. This one is all set yeah, up. Yeah, I just thought I'd give you a wrap up on the intonation. So we got this uh, tremolo to balance. We did put one extra spring in there so there's four springs now. There were just three and there wasn't really enough strength in those springs to balance with the 10 to 46 at concert pitch. So we got 10 to 46 at concert pitch and here's how this Kaler comes back to center. I make a point, I have mentioned in other videos, like I count when I wind. So I basically went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. So that puts me in the ballpark right away. So when I'm working on this type of tremolo system, a Kaler like this, I use these tongue depressors to kind of hold it up off the surface of the body and as you saw I just tuned it up 13 winds. You need to leave these tabs loose because we're going to use the main tuners to kind of get us in the ballpark and then once we're there then we'll snug those down. I'm actually gonna put some lithium grease and oil on these because they were really hard to turn. Boy you, you kind of bruise your fingers trying to do that fine tuning. So I'll put a little bit of lithium grease and some oil on there and loosen them up, just make them a little nicer. I mean that is an odd shape to handle. As you saw, I did the complete setup, compensated nut, no issue at all. Never gave a second thought. It was held firmly in the most advantageous position for every single job I needed to do. Well if any guitar ever called out for strap locks, it's this one. I just put them on the straps.